Welcome to PC Woods Kids Tech Talk. Today we're looking at the AMD Ryzen 5 3400G. This is an APU, so basically a processor that has also the graphics built in, integrated on the same die. So four cores, eight threads with the RX Vega 11 graphics all in one has a max boost clock of 4.2 gigahertz, which is great. Still using the older technology though, on the uh, 12 nanometer architecture, you can see right there, uh, four megs of level three cache for a total of six um, with the level one, level two, and the level three, which is terrific. Priced around $150, which is a great price point if you ask me compared to other processors and what you're getting out of this one. Remember, all you need is just uh, an AM4 motherboard you got a CPU cooler that it comes with, so you can save yourself a couple bucks right there because it came with this uh, uh, Wraith cooler. Slap in this processor in there and away you go. Now, I'm going to install this in an existing system that uh, I had, so it's going to make it very easy for me. I just have to swap the processor, put some thermal paste on there, and then I'm going to reuse the all-in-one liquid CPU cooler that this uh, machine already had, so it makes it easy for me. And here are the specs, just in case. So pause the screen at any time. If I'm going a little bit fast, you can take a look at this at your own pace. Here we are in Windows 10 using CPU-Z. So you can see four cores, eight threads, running it at default speeds. I didn't overclock nothing. It's running on an ASRock board, the B450, uh, 450M Pro 4 with the latest BIOS. Memory, I have it overclocked though at uh, 3200 megahertz because I can and it works. I gotta believe it. I mean, it's it says in the specs that it'll only go up to around 2933 megahertz for this processor, but I was able to get it beyond the XMP profile that it had to 3200, so that's great. Uh, you know, this processor uh, really worked really well with this board and this memory. The um, Vega graphics using a GPU-Z here, I can show it to you a little bit better. Default clock speed, 1400 megahertz memory clock is at 1600 megahertz you can overclock the uh, default clock from 14 to 16 I did that though you really only get about five frames per second or so depending on the game uh, performance that you get the temperatures on idle that's basically what it's doing right now this processor is not really doing much or about 35 degrees Celsius as you can see right there when um, it's not really doing much but right Right now, it's just recording my screen, really. Uh, but if you're browsing the internet, maybe watching a video, you know, I might go up to 15 watts of power usage uh, on that one. Right now, like I said, I'm just recording the screen, so it's only hovering around the 8 watts, maybe 5 to 8, something like that. Uh, so not a lot of power usage. It's low power, right? So maybe you want to add this in, uh, in a NAS. Maybe you want to make a mini uh, home theater PC or something like that. This is great for that as well. Some Fortnite gaming. Here we are running it at full load. Uh, as a test and uh, it bumped up the uh, core speed to 4 gigahertz and you can see there the temperatures also get bumped up to about 70 to 75 degrees Celsius okay depending on how much the boost speed is going and the uh, wattage okay we're looking at the power now goes all the way up to 30 watts roughly uh, for the processor when at full load now, if you have the processor at full load and you have the graphics card combined, that can go anywhere from 45 to 65 watts, right, depending on the load. Now, if we're looking here at some benchmarks from CPU-Z, it says that it's comparable to an Intel Core i7-6700K, which makes sense. That's four cores, eight threads. On the single core test, you can see here how it ranks to these other processors. And on the multi-core, multi-threaded tests, very close to an Intel Core i7-7700K. So I'm really liking the results that I'm getting with this processor because four cores, eight threads is taking us a long way. CPU-Z and now ADA64 is also giving me similar results. It's saying that it also compares to uh, close to a uh, Intel Core i7-6700 and even passes it uh, in, in the rankings here. So I'm really impressed that, uh, you know, without overclocking the processor, I'm really doing really well because of that boost that it automatically goes up to 4.2 gigahertz uh, when needed. Now the performance test 9.0, you can see here that the CPU mark is 9981 and uh, that really ranks itself with others other CPUs, you can see those that it uh, ranked on their website. Uh, I didn't add those there, that's just from their website. The 3D graphics, so the Vega 11 graphics gave a score of 2630 and again, this is what the website shows this um, graphics compares to um, with these other results. 3D Mark, 
The Night Raid benchmark, which is uh, for integrated graphics cards, basically said that I did pretty good on my on my uh, graphics test, as you can see there. So I'm pretty happy with that. Really, this processor is meant for a decent 1080p smooth gaming. Um, you know, if you're running it at low and medium graphics, depending on the game, even on high graphics like Fortnite, will will go on high graphics, no problem. Uh, you're gonna get terrific smooth results. Uh, as long as you don't put things on epic or ultra or anything too high, uh, you'll you'll definitely get, as you can see here with the with the um, Strange Brigade, 40 frames per second on average, which is really nice, really respectable, considering that you're not buying a separate graphics card. You're just using the one and only processor here, the 3400G. Now in Fortnite, again, I have ran the game on low, medium, and high. Starting at high, you can see there the average frames per second is 35 frames per second. On medium, it bumps it way up. There's a huge jump in performance to 87 frames per second, so that might be the sweet spot. And then on low settings, 149 frames per second, which is crazy, but you know, depends on uh, what you want to do. Now, if you overclock this, you're going to get even more performance. And what I would suggest you do is don't overclock it too crazy. Just lock it in at 4.2 gigahertz and just have all eight threads, all cores, all at once running at 4.2 gigahertz, and you're going to see a performance gain there. As you can see here in ADA 64, it exceeded the um, Intel Core i7 7700K and left the 6700K in the dust. So very nicely done there by AMD with this older generation CPU because even though it just came out last year, it's still using the older generation technology to be honest. So a little bit disappointed there on that front. I uh, really was hoping that there would be a drastic change, but that's okay. Still the performance is comparable to those processors. You do save some seconds here. For example, seven seconds I saved when I overclocked with W Prime in that test. So that was, you know, a good little savings. It, the, those add up. So those are the things that I liked, like I just mentioned. Um, and uh, you get what you pay for, right? $150. I mean, what do you want for $150? This is pretty darn good results. And you don't have to go out and buy a separate graphics card. Definitely recommend it for that. And um, if you want to build a NAS, an HTPC, or you just want to do some late gaming, hey, why not? I'd like to thank AMD for providing it. Comment below. Let me know what you think. I'll add the latest pricing in the description. And again, thank you for watching.